coming next. It's my uh, um, uh, privilege to, to uh, introduce George Mitry. Uh, George joins us from Discover Financial Services. Uh, George and I are both in, uh, in central time zone in the U.S. And so, George, I, I know how early it is. Uh, it's uh, about 5 a.m. Um, central time. So it's it's fantastic to have you join us today. Uh, George is the, uh, the head, a, head architect of API program uh, at Discover Financial Services. Good morning, George. Hey, good morning. Hey. Glad to be here. So I will, if you will uh, uh, queue up your your slides, um, I will turn the stage over to you. And uh, uh, thank you. All right. Thank you, Carl. Can you see my screen? Good. All right. Uh, thank you for having me on. Very excited to be here, to be part of the API Days community and API Days London. My name is George Mitri, and I'm going to talk about the state of API reuse and why what you get what got you here won't get you there. I intend for this session to equip you with some new ideas, tools, and key principles. Uh, to help you to define and to tackle the art of API reuse. I will talk about the shift needed in API reuse thinking and the trade-offs that you would be facing. Uh, we'll share our approach at Discover and some learned lessons along with future opportunities. Then we'll conclude with a peek into what I think is the future of API reuse. So hopefully you're in the right session and let's get started. Uh, Quick introduction about myself. I'm Discover's head architect of the API program. I've been in the industry for more than 20 years as a developer, engineer, architect. And uh, in the past five to six years in Discover, I co-founded the API program and uh, have been focusing and passionate about API space uh, for a few years now. Uh, part of my role at Discover is to ensure that we have an API program that brings together uh, all the different aspects that impacts our API strategy and API enabling capabilities. In my role, I work across, for example, the cloud and service mesh strategy, API management, API vendor strategy, uh, developers advocacy, external API business strategy. So the, the API program can drive API standardization strategy across these different domains and moves us toward more product-centric organization that is API, API enabled to ultimately serve our customers. Today's talk will touch upon many of these aspects uh, within the internal API capability and how they impact the state of API reuse. Uh, this talk is an abridged version of the topic of API reuse. Uh, we'll try to fit it in 20 minutes, uh, but uh, would love to continue the discussion and learn more about your experience. So here's my information and how to connect. And let's jump right into the topic. I believe the first struggle of internal API reuse <clears throat> is the feel of having a tug of a war game between reuse and autonomy. For teams who strive to be autonomous and with the agile way of working, we want to eliminate dependencies as much as we can, right? Uh, we handle dependencies as a loaded gun or as a timing bomb that could go off at any time. We want to reduce it, if not to eliminate dependencies as much as we can. On the other hand, we look at reuse, which is encouraged, and it introduces added dependencies, development time dependency on other teams' features backlog, a runtime dependency on the SLA of the service I'm reusing, this appears to be impractical and two conflicting principles at war. I remember how many times I was in discussions with different teams, what felt like an arranged marriage, uh, trying to convince a team to reuse certain API and discussing how to provide some artificial incentives to encourage uh, the reuse. Let's face it, if API reuse is hard, reuse will be avoided. This is not meeting the needs of today's competitive market and the agile way of working. If you would define the North Star of reuse is to see consumers thrilled to reuse. If we can easily find and easily use an API, 
they should be thrilled to reuse it, right? No artificial incentives needed. The real incentive is to have real value out of the reuse. You can have some incentives for producers to compete and to create valuable APIs, but shouldn't need artificial incentives for the consumers. Consumers should be thrill thrilled to reuse. So it's critical to be able to understand the value and the trade-offs made during the reuse decisions. We'll talk more later about how to assess these values, but we need radical changes on how we approach the reuse culture, and we need a shift in the API reuse thinking. So now let's define the shift in the API reuse thinking. First of all, we don't see reuse and autonomy at a tug of a war conflict. We see them working together in two dimensions. What organizations needed is both high API reuse and high autonomy. Let's call this quadrant becoming a platform. As for other quadrants, looking at the lower right quadrant, high autonomy and low reuse, teams are highly autonomous, but doing whatever they want and causing many silos in the organization. This approach leads to duplicate capabilities, data inconsistencies, and poor customer experience. The bottom left quadrant is low reuse, low autonomy. This model will suffer from duplication as well as slow delivery. It's a very expensive way to run a business, right? How about the top left where there is high reuse happening, but still low autonomy? Here, the company is realizing good savings, but reusing APIs and combining and recombining functionalities and data to build new experiences with virtually no cost or overhead for each additional use of the API. But this reuse model will hit many prioritization issues and is high friction and not scalable. In order for an API reuse model to be successful, API reuse must be effortless and teams must be able to maintain autonomy. As you are shifting from project to become product-centric organization, there's another transformation needed, a reuse culture to think and to behave as one platform. When we achieve both effortless API reuse and high autonomy, let's call this the journey to become one platform. Building a platform is difficult, but possible and necessary. Difficult because reuse culture is like any other culture issues. You got out of it as much as you put into it. It doesn't happen in a pocket or on its own. It requires focus and intentional investment. It's difficult but necessary. Being in the, in the, in the banking and insurance industry, it's necessary to become a platform to keep pace and to be able to participate in the digital ecosystem. High autonomy means team are, teams are, are, are product centered. Uh, product teams have well-defined interfaces, clear end-to-end -end ownership and responsibility for the systems associated with their mission. On the effortless API reuse side, it means that every product teams must be API enabled. If I need to call someone, then it's not effortless. Reflecting on the P and API, P is the programmable, right? It's for programmable, right? Uh, going from product to platform means that products are built in a way that they can intuitively work together as one platform. Platform means reusable, consumable, programmable capability that can be embedded with any experience. That's the P in, in, in API. So loosely coupled products can form one platform when they are tightly aligned through the same set of standards of discoverability, usability, security, and documentation. Some structure is needed. We can't have 100 ways of discovering or securing products. We've got to have standards. But standards cannot be difficult to use either. Uh, once we define standards, we've got to automate for wide scale and adoption. Becoming one platform is about standardization and automation. 
these words sound like overloaded words, but uh, I use them here in the context of API reuse governance, in the context of boarding APIs, discovering APIs, and securing APIs, for example. API reuse is a mean to an end. What's more important is the culture of interoperability. We've got to govern with clear purpose. We need to standardize only what matters. Uh, have to be conscious about what we pick to standardize. This is the list. What you're looking at is uh, the list of what we are tackling in Discover. Uh, interested to see if you have a similar list or what you would pick. We have hundreds of global teams producing and consuming APIs. So the effort can easily be distracted. So a key here is to be clear on the purpose and to begin with the end in mind, begin with the future in mind, to govern with a purpose, to turn product into one platform. One of the radical changes to go about becoming one platform is through building communities, open and engaged communities, flipping the governance model on its head, letting the community behavior and engagement challenge existing standards and help evolve and refine the standards together. I like to use the motto, may the best standards win, or maybe uh, may the best API win. Angel Diaz, Discover's VP of Technology Capabilities and Innovation, put it simply and brilliantly as empowering developers to solve the world's problems smarter, faster, and together. The key word here is together. So let's zoom in on each of these aspects. And uh, we decided to standardize, uh, standardizing only what matters. Uh, on each of these, we'll share some key principles that help providing tangible values. And we'll also share some opportunities, learn lessons, uh, or a look into the future. Let's start with onboarding. Uh, the company's API landscape is constantly changing. Every day, we are continually adding new or updating existing APIs, uh, adding new or changing API consumptions. So how to maintain and keep up with what's out there? The key principle here is to integrate API boarding process into the development, into the development life cycle and change management processes. If you're not integrating the API onboarding process with the deployment and change management process, it would be very hard to apply common API standards or conventions. You will always be chasing teams trying to bring order to chaotic deployment. This is not for the faint hearted. This brings APIs under API management either smoothly or with some friction. That's why automation can make or break this principle. Automation will reduce the feel of a highly regulated space. Again, this is not for the faint hearted. There are some trade offs that need to be made to govern at an acceptable pace uh, to the organization. For security standardization, the fact is that unknown or unmanaged APIs present a significant security risk. It's considered the number one attack surface security professionals are worried about. It's an open attack surface. You cannot protect what you don't know it exists. Security is extremely hard to retrofit, cannot be bolted on or to be implemented as an afterthought. In Discover, as part of the API program, we have implemented a security mandate. All homegrown APIs must implement built-in security. That's for access control. Uh, Discover development teams have done an amazing job following this mandate with a common built-in security implementation. This gave us a proactive approach to the discovery of APIs, and we ended up with 100% coverage of the API inventory. Tremendous value there. But to cover all services, this is casting a really wide net and did not differentiate between reusable and non-reusable API, treating all APIs the same. One can think, what does security has to do with reuse? Attaching to security ops enables the API catalog to be connected to runtime authorization policies, 
keeping the catalog accurate and the single source of truth for discoverability and for the dependency graph of consumers and producers of APIs. I think this example of DevSecOps connections is one of the secret sauce ingredients that's, that is critical to the overall success of the one platform journey. A look into the opportunities uh, is to leverage the service mesh capabilities to even widen the net, to include third-party APIs, APIs that are a result of infrastructure as code, and to help us define new automated processes and to help us address one of the other reused struggles, which is confusing APIs with microservices. I see a widespread confusion about APIs and microservice architecture. Uh, some people are using the terms inter interchangeably. They shouldn't because they are not the same. Microservice architecture is not an investment in reuse. It is an investment in agility. The intention of microservice architecture is to tackle the internal design and the implementation detail of a system. They are intended to reduce coupling, to optimize speed of delivery and ease of scale. This is meant as an internal implementation detail. You can still have an API that is very hard to update, scale, or optimize. So it shares none of the attributes of a microservice architecture. Just because it has an API, it doesn't make it a microservice. Microservice architecture is not an investment in reuse. We as engineers and architects need to be careful not to fall into this trap or to have too many microservices and unnecessary overhead, but that's a different topic for a different time. Uh, the point here is that to help having a healthy API reuse culture, should, you should challenge where the term microservice is used inappropriately. Defining a clear microservice and service mesh architecture will help defining an even more clear taxonomy and help with focusing the reuse culture and help reducing the noise and streamline reuse in general. Let's look at uh, API documentation. API documentation is expanding beyond the contract specs. It's evolving to support more automation and more test abilities. This opens the door to decompose the API specs and expand beyond human-friendly documentation to machine-friendly docs, uh, where you can have a part as part of the uh, uh, documentation. For example, uh, contract testing uh, packed files, ability to generate mock servers, having Kubernetes or Docker or Helm chart templates. I'm watching this space closely as I think it can radically change how we automate API reuse governance. It will be interesting to see how it will evolve uh, to support more automation. But we could, what you could do now is to adopt a specs first approach. This is super helpful for today and for the future. The outcome today is to have a single source of truth for all API specs. Again, tremendous value there. Lots of opportunities here when integrating uh, documentation in the broader sense with the CI/CD pipeline uh, to not only keep the source of truth in sync, but to also automate reuse of solution patterns, deployment files, and provisioning of test data. Uh, taking a more declarative approach at multiple stages of reuse. Let's look into discoverability. I believe that number one job of APR reuse governance is to help the organization to stick to a consistent taxonomy and to promote value-based reuse. During planning activities, teams will need to know when duplication is accepted, when it's imperative to reuse, and how to discern the difference. This requires certain maturity, but a good and clear taxonomy can help advancing toward that type of maturity. On the opportunity side, there are always opportunities to gain deeper level of discoverability, not only for finding APIs, but also to contextually understand the API to learn the ubiquitous language the team is using. 
the data elements that are part of the interface and also understand the operational maturity of the implementation by looking, for example, at some community ratings, asking questions uh, to other consumers. Now let's spend the last minute we have to quickly look both backward and forward to have a perspective about the evolution of API reuse and where it's going. First generation of API reuse was about SOA, the service oriented architecture, where the focus was on low coupling, high coherence, and many other great practices are still applicable till now. But think about SOAP Gateway's appliances and the heavyweight development tools and solutions during that generation, focusing on the protocols, the runtime, the circle of focus was small and inward, looking inward. Second generation API management solution added developer portal capability, um, started uh, to address the, the, the consumer experience. The circle is widened beyond the runtime into the full life cycle, offering better experience, but still disconnected experiences. More outward focus, but still heavy lifting work is required to automate and to connect to the runtime. In next generation, the circle is widened even more and the developer portal would become a marketplace of assets with socially driven reuse. Here, the reuse is effortless, and the new norm is programming through a higher layer of abstraction. This would manifest itself as unified developer experience, unifying what we call today the management plane, the CICD pipeline, and the cloud control plane uh, uh, to offer a higher abstraction layer to the engineers. Let me leave you with this thought, that reuse is a mean to an end. What's more important is having this culture of interoperability and to ultimately participate in the one digital ecosystem. The question we need to ask fundamentally for the reuse culture is how to think and behave as one platform. Fundamentally, of course, as we're all about solving business problems for our customer. Again, the question is how to think and behave as one platform to be able to participate in the digital ecosystem. That's all I have today. Uh, I hope this session has been useful to you and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, th thank you, George. Uh, you, you cover such a, a, a breadth of topics here. Um, uh, really two things in the, in the short time we have. Um, one question, can, can you go back to the comment that you made about the, we call it the secret sauce? I think that's a really important um, element to underline. And I'd like to like if you could share that with us one more time. So as a, as a key takeaway here. Yeah, so it, it's it's the, uh, the the integration of development, security and operation. Uh, and that happens with the an API management program or, 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 or platform when uh, the development team are uh, implementing built-in security, that's the security part and the development part. And then the operational part comes along when uh, the, the, the security is driven through some declarative policies. And the decla declarative policies are uh, uh, pushed to the runtime from uh, uh, the, the, the API management platform. So that keeps track of the, uh, the, 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 the dependency graph and also it does uh, a great job in, in, in toward that one platform, the unification of the security plane, the development plane, and the runtime operational plane working together as one platform. Great. And um, big, big picture, you've been working on uh, building an API program for, for many years. Um, and so uh, much longer, in fact, than probably most people have, have been involved in in, a, in API management or API program development. If you could look back in time, uh, is there anything in particular that you would avoid if you did this, if you had to go through this journey again, um, uh, any any mistakes made or, or recommendations for, for practices that you would not do the second time around? Yeah, there's there's a lot of learnings. There, there were a lot of learnings. And I, and I think uh, as the industry evolves, uh, we, we, we continue the learnings. Uh, it, it's, it's not, uh, you know, it, it, there's, the, the, there's a lot of shifts in, in the industry. One thing I, I would say that it's about uh, the, uh, the API as 
uh, infrastructure as API, right? Or, or, or like the, the as codes. And there's this explosion of those APIs, infrastructure utilities uh, that were uh, kind of out of scope uh, and, and, and not uh, looked at in, in, in a, in a, for a built-in security or for discoverability or all the different aspects of an API program. I would think those are, are, are uh, uh, becoming even more in numbers uh, mm -hmm. than the business APIs and the other APIs that uh, we're managing. And, and uh, it, it, it's, it's an area where um, we did not focus on. And, and I feel like we, uh, uh, the service mesh will, will be able to maybe uh, help us uh, with, with the uh, uh, space uh, to, to bring it in. Fantastic. Um, so that brings us to time. Uh, George Mitri from Discover Financial Services, thank you so much for joining us today, George. Really appreciate it.